Hello everyone. Strangely, I found two separate stories today of teachers exploiting their students. And it just so happens we get to see two different kinds of examples. One with a female teacher, the other involving male teachers. An additional point of interest is how they are written. So let's first go into the WBTV's report and see middle school teachers accused of exchanging sexually explicit images with student. Already I am disheartened and disgusted by the fact this took place in a middle school, but at this point, if you know my content, you should know that my contempt for people like this is of the highest regard. And if I do not seem as enraged by it as you might expect, this is just how I am after work. Rowan County, North Carolina. Two teachers were arrested at a middle school in Rowan County on sex offense charges involving a student. West Rowan Middle School teachers, 29-year-old Justin Andrew Avery and Ethan Andrew Gross, were both charged with third-degree exploitation of a minor. I appreciate his name is Gross, quite fitting to his role in the story. Gross was arrested on December 23rd and charged with indecent liberties with a minor. Avery was also charged with indecent liberties with a child. Deputies say both Avery and Gross used social media apps to exchange sexually explicit images with a student. A third suspect, identified as 24-year-old Donovan Perez Hernandez, also faces indecent liberties and child exploitation charges. Hernandez is not associated with Rowan Salisbury schools, according to deputies. Warrants were obtained for his arrest, but he has not yet been located. Now, I hate to say it, but adding in that last person does seem a bit strange, all things considered. Since he has no connection to the schools, I'm trying to ascertain his connection to the case. But that is tangential and not entirely relevant. He's on the loose, and therefore I imagine additional information will come out upon his capture. Deputies say Gross had been communicating with the student starting in early December, and the communication continued until it was reported to law enforcement by the student's family later that month. Detectives met with Gross at his home, and they say he confessed to having the inappropriate conversations with the student and exchanging pornographic images. And that's it! That's the entire story relating to these men. It seems straight and to the point. From the brief amount of information here, I would say this is likely a slam-dunk case, open and shut and they will likely be put away for a while. I am a little shocked, though. It says they are charged with indecent liberties with a child, which, as is mentioned here, is a Class F felony, which is apparently punishable with 10 to 41 months in prison, and exploitation of a child in the third degree, which is only a 4 to 6 month community service sentence. I am slightly shocked because usually folks like this are hit hard with the law. The law doesn't take too kindly to exploitation of children in this way, so I feel as if there are details of this case that we may never know about due to the age of the child in question. I personally find this act deplorable, and I personally think they deserve more time, but I am not a judge nor a prosecutor, so it's not my job. Now this next one has a hard-hitting headline, and... Yeah. Teacher charged with having sex with 16-year-old student multiple times, SC cops say. A teacher at a South Carolina high school was charged with multiple crimes Monday after authorities said she had sex with a 16-year-old student from October 1, 2019 through January 11, 2020. Anna Elizabeth Jeanette Patton committed sexually related crimes according to the arrest warrants from the Darlington County Sheriff's Office. In addition to having sex with the student, the 22-year-old Florence woman sent the teen messages with sexually explicit material arrest warrants show. Patton used different social media accounts to send nude images to the student and also sent texts to entice the teen to have sex according to arrest warrants. A combination of evidence and statements made by the teen led to Patton's arrest warrants show. Uh, Patton was charged with sexual battery with a student 16 or 17 years of age, no aggravated force or coercion, criminal solicitation of a minor, and disseminating harmful material or exhibiting harmful performance to minors, jail records show. Okay. I want to stop here and discuss these charges. Sexual battery with a student is punishable by up to five years in prison if it is a felony charge, and up to three years if it is a misdemeanor. I don't understand how or why there is a misdemeanor charge in this case, but whatever, again, not a judge. The others, according to the public records, appear to have been dropped. Back to the article, the school district said Patton has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation, the Florence Morning News reported. The safety of our students is our highest priority, school district spokesperson Audrey Childers said, according to WPDE. The district is cooperating with the law enforcement investigation. Well, yes, of course. Obligatory post by school district says the safety of the students is of the highest priority. That's expected. But clearly this is going on for several months. So hard to believe. 
Now, before we go on, I want to point out something. Many have said in the past when dealing with these kinds of cases, in this case of a female teacher and a male student, that it is something to be commended or applauded. I want to quash that right now. No, it is not. Now, despite the act not being statutory rape in the state of South Carolina, where the legal age of consent is 16, because the teacher is with a student in this case, there is a legal bearing on how a position of power influences an otherwise malleable or impressionable mind in these things. Should this have been in another state, say Florida, it would have been statutory. But I do believe in states' rights and they can do what they want with their own states, but nothing about this situation is a good thing. Even if the person was 18, because they are a student and teacher, it's not legal. So we have stark contrasts here. The teachers in North Carolina appear to have exploited a minor in their official capacities as teachers, and one strangely involved, but also not. They have exploited someone well below the age of consent and are looking at a max of 41 months in prison, as the article shows. Whereas the teacher, Anna Patton, I'm going to speculate, got into a sexual encounter with a student multiple times over the three-month period and is looking at a max of five years. Now, if the other charges had stuck, the criminal solicitation and disseminating harmful material or exhibiting a harmful performance to a minor, she could have faced an additional 10 years and a fine of five grand per count. As far as I'm concerned, the situations are too different to give a proper discussion of the two instances as equal, saying, oh, this person should have gotten more, or this person deserved less. But I wanted to show these stories to exhibit that, first of all, both of these happened to be reported today, which is depressing, to say the least, but also that both kinds of people are capable of evil actions. It is not inherently better if it's a female teacher, even in the eyes of the law. There have been cases where the same crime has found women to get more lenient sentences than men, and I wanted to share this for no other purpose except to throw a curveball to that thought, and also to shed a light on people who I find to be morally evil. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful night, and I will see you all soon.